Hey, okay. Just waiting on Richard. Love it. Nice red. I love the red. Lots of red. Very on point. Hi, everybody. There he is. Hello. Good. It's good to see you all. Good to see you as well. Okay, so you guys ready to get started? Let's do it. Um, what's up, everybody? My name is Dan Roto, and welcome to our IG Live. I'm joined with my friends and fellow Virgin Plus ambassadors, Miles Sexton, Mango Lassie, and Virgin founder, Richard Branson. In case you haven't heard, in Canada, Virgin Mobile is now Virgin Plus. And with Virgin Plus, you get mobile plus so much more, like value-packed plans, amazing customer service, an award-winning app, member benefits that get you exclusive deals and chances to win VIP experiences that money can't buy you. And this is something that I actually got to um, experience these past few years, which I'll talk about in this discussion. If you are in Ontario or Quebec, you now have access to unlimited internet. So you can stream your heart out, get access to all new TV with the hottest shows. When you add Virgin Plus to your life, you can stream more, talk more, play more, and of course, live more. And that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about here today. In Canada, the end of the pandemic is finally in sight. We've seen our friends all over the world get back to social gatherings, concerts, travel, and soon it's going to be our turn. As we return back to the real world, we have the exciting opportunity to look back and see what we're gonna take from our past year and add it into our future going forward. In the past 15 months, accept things we never knew we needed, like more downtime. We've been, uh, yeah, sorry, and uh, we've been given the chance now to uh, sort of pause and reflect at what brought us joy over this past year and how we could bring it into our life moving forward. Um, we're going to use the next 30 minutes to discuss how we can get more out of our relationships, our jobs, and ourselves. And most importantly, what we can take from last year and bring it into our future. So with all that being said, welcome, everybody, and we'll get started. Oh, exciting. <laughs> yeah. I just, um, saw, I, just, I just saw on the questions, it said, if, if, uh, if you're real, Richard Branson, say hello. So, hello. <laughs> oh, there. He's been validated right there. Um, actually, Richard, we're going to start with you. First off, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, chat with us. And congrats on going to space. I never thought I'd ever say that to somebody. <laughs> uh, thank exciting. you very much. It was a, it was a um, uh, yeah, definitely the most magical day of my life. And um, very lucky, lucky to have my children and grandchildren there. And, and, uh, and just talking, talking to the kids um, about it. I mean, I've always... Uh, I've always dreamt of being able to fly, and you know, and in my dreams, I flap my arms and fly. And to um, uh, actually, literally, to be able to uh, to fly uh, and float in space was a dream come true for me. And, and it's just great to be able to share it with young young people. Um, and hopefully, many yeah, many people listening to this program one day uh, will have the opportunity to go to space. Yeah, hopefully, uh, we get to be one of those people. Um, so we're going to start with getting more out of our relationships. Now, being a family man, how have you been able to stay connected over this past year with your loved ones? Well, I, I've been extremely lucky um, in, in that we have this you know, tiny little island in the Caribbean, um, which I um, fell in love with when I was about 28 years old. There was nothing on it. There was just one, one, one palm tree. And um, and uh, and over the years we've, we've, we've created something rather magical so I was able to extract my kids and my grandkids to come here um, and we, 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 we hankered down here um, and you know I was fighting a lot of fires around the world because you know like everybody you know we, we, we had airlines grounded we had cruise companies grounded not like everybody but we had you know, uh, fitness clubs you know the different kinds of business we were in were, were grounded and some of them still are um, and we just had to, um, uh, to yeah to work hard to, to make sure they all survive uh, to make sure that as many jobs as possible were protected um, but you know I had I had the support of family and um, around me and, and and so we, you know, we, we got it. We got through it together, um, and, and we 
were very fortunate. So did you, uh, would you do a lot of business virtually that you would have done in person this past year? Yeah, I mean, you had, you had to. And, um, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm lo loving the fact that I can now jump on a plane and um, hopefully Virgin Atlantic plane. Um, and um, got to get the the the, the, ad, the advertorials out, um, and, um, and and you know and travel and, and get you know get things done face to face because I think that, you know in the end there's nothing nothing that beats you know a face to face conversation. But mm -hmm. um, you know, but in the meantime, uh, you know, being able to communicate, I see there's a lot of people from Russia that have, that have come in on this program um, uh, to, today and. You know, to be able to communicate to people in Russia who one wouldn't necessarily normally be able to communicate with is wonderful, um, and uh, and, other, and other countries, and, and that's the the, mag the magical thing about technology. Yeah, I think there's a lot of beauty in uh, these virtual meetings because of the simplicity and the immediacy of picking up your phone, one button, you've got a loved one on the other end you can chat with. Um, speaking of face to face, Mango Bass. I want to chat with you because the drag community would have been heavily affected by the removal of in-person events. So how were you able to stay connected with your drag community? The community kind of made a shift to doing online shows instead. Um, so instead of doing them in bars, people set up uh, cameras in their own spaces and performed for a, a digital audience. And it was amazing. The turnout was always good. Uh, people were engaged in the comments. It was, it was something that no one was expecting, but it turned out amazing. So you you made do then. You you transitioned yeah. to a full virtual performance. Yeah, everything was switched online, and we found community online. I think that's yeah. the most important thing. Uh, we found each other online. We started building an online community instead of an in person. And I think a lot of people appreciated that because in that, that downtime, they were sort of looking to their favorite influencers or whoever they follow to see what they were doing during that. So I'm sure they love that. Um, Miles, I took a look at your social footprint, okay? And you are all about authenticity, okay? Um, what advice do you have for people that may feel like they need to appear perfect online in a less than perfect situation like, like last year? I mean, I feel like I was, last year was like all about deconstructing perfectionism, you know, like I, I felt like during this time, I think we almost became tired of like this over perfect images that we were seeing online. So for myself personally, it was like really kind of about like breaking that down and just like really opening up and having these like raw and real kind of conversations with my followers and really trying to like create more of this like online community and online support system. Cause I think we all were going through it. So I, I would definitely say like, let's like eliminate that perfectionism a bit. And like, let's like really start sharing our hearts with each other. A hundred percent. I find that um, there's a, a different type of connection once you open up your vulnerabilities to people that they actually get to see who Miles Sexton really is. And they're like, okay, let's, uh, let's start following more. I like this guy. Exactly. It's like talking about the journey too. You know, I feel like oftentimes we just see like the end result, but like, what about all of that kind of area in the middle? And it's like, I think it, it is, it's becoming more and more about showing that in between because I think that's the real, the real good stuff in there. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. Let's, let's shift this conversation now to getting more out of ourselves. This is a big one because over the past 15 months, we've been left with a lot of time to be on our own. Um, Richard, I want to start with you. You seem to always make time for your passions. Like you literally just went to space, which, which most people dream of doing. Um, in a time like 2020, where it was a first for a lot of us, the world locked us down, was there anything you learned about yourself and the power of slowing down? Um, yeah, I... I... Um, I, I don't necessarily want to slow down. I mean, I, I, um, uh, there, there are so many cha cha challenges out there that need fixing. Um, uh, and, you know, I think if you're lucky enough to become a, a inter international personality where you can pick up the phone and cut through and, and get things done, uh, yeah, there's a, lot, there's a lot that needs to be done. Um, uh, I mean, I'm just looking at these wonderful messages that are coming in from Iran, from Russia, from 
uh, from the Middle East, um, uh, uh, and you know, it, 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 the, you know, there are there, there are you know all, all these different places have different issues and um you know we have a we have a wonderful organization called the elders that are that are trying to uh you know bring bring about peace in various regions where where um where where conflict still exists um you know we have we have a another wonderful group of people who are, are, you know trying to tackle climate change and um so uh you know so i, I i'm still working really hard but at the same time um Making sure that you know, in in a downtime uh, like COVID, you know, I keep fit, keep healthy, um, so that hopefully I can live, you know, many more many more years to help help tackle some of these issues. Um, I mean, we have, uh, you know, we, we have two people two two people on this program uh, who are gay, or um, um, and you know, th th there are countries that we're broadcasting to where they treat gay people really badly. I mean, Russia. I'm afraid that you know, gay people are treated abysmally there, um, and people in Russia need to realise that you know people are born gay. They have, you know, I don't believe they have any choice in the matter, um, and uh, and you know, and it's so wonderful that other countries have embraced in, embraced uh, the gay movement, and uh, and gay people should be treated with dignity in in Russia. It should be. Treated Club. Um, but massacres like that are taking place in many countries around the world all the time. Uh, generally, individual gay people being um, signaled out. And um, so, you know, if you have a voice, you've got to speak out about what you believe to be right. And, and it's, it's incredibly important to use that voice. So it's time well spent. You don't seem to, I guess you don't seem to slow down. You just sort of shift your objectives to different areas. Yeah, I mean, look, there is there, there is so many there's so, there there are things that as an entrepreneur I think I can see in the world that maybe um, um, politicians who are only in the job for three or four years uh, you know have it more difficult to get a grasp on it. I mean, let's take the global war on drugs. It's a it's a war that has taken place for sixty years. As a businessman, it, it's been an abject failure. I would have closed it down, you know, fifty nine years ago. Um, and, 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 you know, people who have, uh, who take drugs, if they have a, a drug problem, they should be treated as, uh, you know, to, they, they, they should be helped. They should not be criminalized. And yet the world is, is not only criminalizing people, but, you know, in, in places like Iran, they're hanging, hanging people. And, um, so we, we've got to deal with people with compassion, whether they're, you know, whether, whether they have a drug problem, whether they have an alcohol problem. What, what, whatever the issue is, everybody in the world should be treated treated with compassion. And, and so we have a, uh, a group of global commissioners um, who are trying to educate governments to, to uh, take a completely different approach to a lot of these issues and, and, and drugs, drugs being one of them. Very impactful stuff. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, I want to now shift the conversation to Miles. Uh, you recently did some solo travel. Um, yeah. And over the past year through isolation, a lot of people felt that being stuck in your head uh, or having all that time to ruminate caused mental blocks. Did that happen to your creative flow at all this past year? Absolutely. I mean, before the pandemic, I was like flying all over the world for work and I was always with people like 24 hours a day. And, you know, and then the pandemic kind of happened and I'm like, oh, now I'm officially alone like 24 hours a day all the time. So it was really interesting to kind of feel a lot of those emotions that kind of came to the surface of being alone. Um, so it was like really kind of cool to like challenge myself to kind of like lean into those emotions a bit. Going on a lot of like solo hiking was kind of like a big thing that I, I did like locally um, in Ontario, which was really awesome because I, and I learned so much about myself and I like got so inspired of just like kind of turning these like solo adventures into kind of acts of self-love, which I think was so powerful. Mm -hmm. And then, then being able to share that online and, uh, you know, and 
made it even more important for like the importance of unlimited data, unlimited internet, because I was like constantly all over the place. So yeah, encouraging. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I'm jealous you could you could solo travel. There's an element there that it's still kind of intimidating to me, but uh, something I definitely want to work on in my free time. Um, everybody that's tuning in right now, thank you so much for being here. We we're having a discussion right now about getting more out of our lives, out of our jobs, relationships, and ourselves. Um, in case you haven't heard, Virgin Mobile is now Virgin Plus in Canada. And with Virgin Plus, you get so much more. You get uh, value-packed plans, amazing customer service. Um, you get an award-winning app, member benefits with exclusive deals, and chances to win VIP experiences that money can't buy. Uh, so we're going to continue this conversation on over to Mango. You know, Mango, you are somebody that, uh, like we've we talked about this, your industry was heavily impacted, where... Uh, you went from live shows that were such a big portion of your craft to having to perform at home, right? You'd usually go to the event space, your lighting would be done, your music would be done. Did you have to learn a new skill set now that you were doing all that on your own, like editing videos, lighting? Yeah, I had to relearn everything. Um, <laughs> I had to learn how to edit videos, set up my own lighting that was favorable to the conditions that I was working in. Um, I had to learn to mix music on my own as well. It was, it was exciting. Um, and now I have like a bunch of new skills that I can carry on uh, into the future. Like I, I know I will continue doing uh, online shows. Um, I will continue mixing music. I will continue editing. It just, I was, it was a blessing almost. It felt, it, I feel accomplished. <laughs> because you've learned all these new skills. Are these something that you're going to use post pandemic i think so um yeah. you really can't go wrong with having learning more skills so the video editing the photo editing like that's something i'm going to carry on for sure uh the music i'm not so good at but getting better <laughs> <laughs> it's okay um speaking of learning new skills richard during this pandemic so many people uh had all this time to develop new skills or start little businesses what advice do you have for people that might have launched a new business venture in this pandemic um look i i have enormous respect uh, for, for people who try things um i mean people always come up with reasons why people shouldn't try things um and i think uh, you know, started being becoming an entrepreneur and, and seeing uh, that there was a need a need out there for whatever product it is that you're wanting to bring to the market. Um, uh, you know, is is fantastic. Now, some people will fall flat in their faces, uh, but they'll learn from it. Um, others, you know, will find that you know what they're, what they're what they're starting um, is successful. Um, and you know, entrepreneurism is all about making people's lives better. I mean, if you, if you, um, uh, you know, your business is only going to be successful if people are going to uh, uh, improve their lives or be made to smile or uh, you know, be made to be happy. Um, and, uh, and, and that's what starting a business is all about. So, um, you know, we, we have something called Virgin Startup Loans, for instance, in the UK, where you know, we have 3,000 people who started small businesses and we have mentors to help them. And, um, and you know, some of those small businesses will become the virgins of the future and, and become, you know, global, global names. Um, uh, but, you know, others may just look after their local community. Um, but we, we, whichever, whichever way it turns out, those people are, are, are offering, um, uh, you know, are, are, are collectively making this world, I think, a, a much, much better place than, than, than um, as a result. Mm -hmm. uh, Miles, do you want to touch on that? Because I know you, uh, you developed a new sort of series during the pandemic. <laughs> I did, sorry, excuse me. It was kind of crazy because, you know, the fashion shows just completely ended. So it was like, I had to get creative and figure out like a new way to like showcase fashion. So I started putting on like fashion shows in my alleyway and like would record them. But it was for the construction workers that were building the condo building beside me or like eating their sandwiches. And I'm in this like big ridiculous dress, like spinning around. They were having a wild time. Yeah. Um, but it was great because like this series like ended up going viral on the internet and people just like loved this like rawness of like of it. So I think it was cool to like it, it challenged me to create in a different way, which was so powerful. And like I feel like I've like discovered this new part of myself. So 
pretty cool. Awesome. So, so you went vis uh, virtual, you thrived. I heard that there was something called virtual modeling that yeah. popped up. Can you, can you talk about that? Do you think that's going to continue? Did you actually get to virtual model? I did. I did get to shoot for a magazine virtually. So like, I literally had to set up my cell phone in my like in my apartment, and like I had to like kind of build the set like in my own apartment. And then they like the photographer like took screenshots of me as I went, and the images turned out gorgeous. It was definitely like a, an interesting experience because I'm so used to it being in person. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know if it's something that will continue. But I think it was like really cool to see that people were like trying to create with like whatever they had around them, even though right. we couldn't be together in person. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Creativity was at an all-time high because people had to wow. make it work, right? Um, Mango, what was the biggest difference from performing in front of a crowd where you had these people clapping, cheering, giving you this big energy boost, to having to perform in front of a screen in your own home? What was the biggest difference? It was, it was a big change. I'm, I always try to interact with the audience when I'm performing live. I always try to go into the audience, um, check the vibe, um, trying to interact with as many people as possible, and I wasn't able to do that when I was performing from my bedroom. Um, the thing that I do love is that I was able to still see the chat messages on the computer uh, on whatever program I was uh, performing on. Um, it was it was nice rereading them, and uh, people still tipped as well. They tipped online instead of in person. Like, it was great. It was wow. exactly like performing at the club minus the audience. Wow. I, so yeah. they still tipped. You still got the benefit of, of doing that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> wow, it's amazing. Um, I, Richard. I, 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 I'm, just, I'm just so loving watching, re reading all the comments from Turkey, from France, from... Uh, somebody just asked whether I'd seen Boy George's website, and uh, Boy George, we, we actually discovered in a in a club in London uh, many oh, wow. years ago when he was part of Culture Club. No and, way! And, wow, and, and, what a story! And, 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 oh. He was one of, one of our first artists, and um, uh, and I, you know, actually last year I, I, we went to um, to our new cruise company with Boy George, and I was I was going through a. a uh, airport in in uh, uh, in Italy um, and all the customs officers looked at me and got really excited and, and I was smiling waiting for you know for a picture and I suddenly realized they weren't interested in me at all it was boy George right <laughs> 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 uh, but uh, he, ended up, he ended up dancing on the custom custom officers table and singing oh, yeah. it's great that's amazing what a time uh, we're now gonna first off thank you guys for answering all these questions we are now gonna shift towards a Q&A from people, if that's okay with you, all the questions in the comments. Uh, we have a com uh, question from Finkel. What's next for you, Richard, now that you've been to space? Oh, um, yeah, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of challenges out there. Um, uh, and, uh, and, and I think having, you know, having been to space and having looked, you know, Look back on this beautiful Earth that we live on. Um, uh, you know, we've, we've just got to re renew our energies to try to uh, protect so many different aspects of this Earth. Whether it's uh, you know species that are being you know that are disappearing at a rapid rate, um, you know whether it's the rainforests um, that are being chopped down at a rapid rate, and um, uh, you know whether it's climate change and so on and so on. And I think uh, that. Uh, you know, we're setting up lots of different organizations to try to tackle these different issues. And I, I will just spend that much more of an effort on, on them having been to space. And, you know, I think that um, there's a wonderful book called The Overview Effect, which is about all the people who've been to space and looking back on Earth and what they've done since they've come back back to Earth. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I, I, I want to be proud of, you know, proud, proud of what I do the next 20 years and, and, the, and the difference I make. And, 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 um, and we're in a position where hopefully we can make a bit of a difference. And we're, we're going to go all out to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of books, Ramona Peters asked, Richard is the inspiration of my life. Will he be writing more books, creating more advanced videos? Um, Look, I think it's very important for all of us to write a book. It doesn't matter, you know, whether you're well known or, or not well known. We've all got a book in us. We've all, every everybody who's listening to this program, 
will have incredible stories to tell. And whether it's for your children or your grandchildren, um, or whether it's for the wider members of the public, I think if you if you lead a uh, you know if you lead an interesting life, which we all do, um, you've got to share it. And otherwise, I think your life is wasted somewhat. So um, you know, so you know, I've written one or two books. Um, Generally, it's all got slightly sexual connotations. Screw it, let's do it. Um, losing my virginity, uh, business strip there. But anyway, this is, people seem to enjoy reading them, and 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 I'm sure we'll be I'll be writing more. I just saw a comment in here about uh, potentially leaving a job to follow a dream slash passion. Um, what do you say to somebody that wants to do that? To follow a green, a green, um, I, I think that's fantastic. I mean, look, I think all of us have just got to move our attention to, um, you know, to uh, working on, on on the issues of the world. And and I think if somebody's brave enough to say give up a good job to um, to help, uh, you know, to help tackle some of the uh, the fundamental issues of the world, good on them. Um, uh, uh, you know, I obviously can't rec I can't, you know, without knowing more details for that in, in a general sense, I think that's, that's a, a brave, a brave thing to do. And most likely they would have led a much more satisfying life doing that. Hmm. Interesting. Miles, do you want to touch on that same question? I feel like, you know, it, it is like a two Richard's point. I feel like it is definitely, it, it takes a lot of courage, I think, to like follow your dreams, you know, and to like, oftentimes like choose like security or safety, you know, for your authenticity or like for going for that dream. But I honestly, I don't know, I've always like really lived my life and like trying to chase all of my dreams. And like, I think everything has kind of like come together when you start like really putting your energy towards something that you are so passionate about because it like gets you out of the bed in the morning. And like, I feel like I, you know, when you're doing something that doesn't bring you joy, it's just like, I'm, I feel so unmotivated to do it where now I'm like living my life and doing things that like inspire me every day that it's like, I don't know. So I, I encourage everyone to like start chasing their dreams and like taking that like little leap of faith and jump because I think you can totally build something beautiful out of it. Uh, that's a beautiful answer. Thank you, Miles. We no had problem. sorry these these comments are just like coming in fast. Richard, there's one more here saying, "What was it like to cross the Atlantic in a hot air balloon?" Um, it was uh, it was hairy. Uh, it was foolish. <laughs> it had to be done before, um, and um, uh, and you know we felt that if we could sort of fly high in the jet stream, we'd have a chance of going the whole way across. Um, we did get the record for crossing the Atlantic, the first, first people to cross the Atlantic, but um, we very, very, very nearly killed ourselves in the process. Um, uh, I love a challenge. And if somebody says, you know, um, you know, nobody's crossed the Atlantic in a hot air balloon before, I'm, I'm, I'm the first to want to put my hand up and give it a go. Um, and, um, you know, we went on to be the first to cross the Pacific. Um, we missed LA. We went, took off from Japan. We were aiming for Los Angeles. We missed LA by two and a half thousand miles and ended up in the Arctic. Um, uh, uh, so, it, it, you know, great stories for me to be able to tell my grandkids about, and um, no, no, yeah, no end of fun stories. So, that, um, but I don't necessarily recommend it for everybody to. Do <laughs> I've got Good to know. The, 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 the Guinness World Record record I've got for being pulled out of the sea more times than anybody else by heading. <laughs> wow. So. Point the question. Okay, Mango, we're going to end it with you. There was a comment in here about, will you do any performances virtually internationally? Does that make oh. sense? I, I think because now drag is online and like videos are being posted online, it's so accessible that people are able to watch these things from across the across the ocean. <laughs> um, so I've had people from from where my parents are from, from Pakistan, from India, message me after seeing a performance and it just blows my mind that someone across the world is watching me perform. It's just insane. I wouldn't be able to do that if it wasn't uh, for online performances and drag me. So we could see you internationally soon, virtually. Oh yeah, absolutely. Great stuff. <laughs> Okay, thank you everybody for joining us today. My name is Dan Roto, and I've been hanging out with my friends and fellow Virgin Plus ambassadors, Miles Sexton, Mango Lassie, and our special guest, Virgin founder, Richard Branson. In case you haven't heard, 
Um, in Canada, Virgin Mobile is now Virgin Plus. And with Virgin Plus, you get mobile plus so much more, like value-packed plans, amazing customer service, um, what was that? award-winning app. Member benefits get you exclusive deals and chances to win VIP experiences that money can't buy. Uh, when you add Virgin Plus to your life, you can talk more, stream more, play more, live more. And we hope that you all find some time to get more to life this summer. And that you celebrate Canada's pandemic recovery with your friends and family in a big way. Thank you guys so much for joining. Thank you, Richard, Mango, Miles. It's been a pleasure. It looks like everybody everybody listening is going to have to move to Canada. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a lot going on. Bye. Thank you so much. All right, thanks. Bye. Bye.